Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to be uh, doing questions 99 to 101, or unit 32 of the Green Booklet. Now, I think this is a set of actually really tough questions. To sit in this exam for the first time would be really difficult. Um, once you understand what the questions are asking, I don't think it's that tough, but there's a lot of things to juggle around with this. Um, I've written out the equation that they gave us here, uh, which is used to model behaviour of a, a gas, and we're told about a number of constants and what each of the letters represents, which I've written here. The one thing I'd say is be careful because we've got t in the equation and also t here for time. Um, in the equation it's written t for temperature is uh, in italics, but with handwriting it looks obviously the same. So um, we'll start with 99 and it says the dimensions of B are what? Um, and it, it's it's sort of tough to realise what they mean by dimensions, but what they, they think um, we should be working towards is putting these constants in terms of these fundamental quantities um, of mass, length and time. So one rule we can see is that you can't take away uh, quantities from each other that aren't related in some way. So if you're taking away um, a temperature from uh, a distance, you're not really telling uh, me very much. So if you're going to be taking something away from something else, they better be the same thing. If you're going to be taking away um, one distance from another, that would make much more sense in terms of an expression, especially whenever you're modeling something. Um, so here we have V minus B as part of the equation, and V stands for volume. Um, and if we're taking away something from V, then we can assume it has the same units. There's no point in taking it away if it doesn't have the same units. Um, so if volume has the units uh, of, of three dimensions, for example, which would be length times length times length, then B must have that too. So for the volume, let's say, of a cube here, we've got length in each of the three dimensions here. And so the, the units you can use here would be L cubed. And they're the three things that define this volume. And so if you're taking something away from that, you can assume it will have the same um, units. And so we can say that the units for B or the dimensions of B are going to be L cubed. And that gives us an answer therefore for 99 of A. Okay, so for question 100, and this is where it starts to get quite tricky, it asks what the dimensions of A are. So again, with the same logic, we have a part of the equation that says, P plus A over V squared. Now P is for pressure, which implies that this half of the expression also is for pressure. So A over V squared is pressure. So let's think about what pressure is. Um, an equation for it is a force applied over a certain area. And based on mass, length and time, we haven't quite got anything that that works here but we could work out what area is you know if you're looking for the area of this square it'd be a length multiplied by a length and so we could simplify this to force over l squared now how do we um get fa uh, force down to mass length or time well you might want to uh, remember that force is equal to um, mass times acceleration so that's the mass sorted and how do we get acceleration well acceleration is going to be um, a change in speed over time so the change in speed doesn't matter what we just need to know is that the top line of this will be speed over time and speed is going to be um, a distance traveled or a length over a period of time so acceleration will be length over time over time if that makes sense, it'll be L over T squared. So that means force is going to be L times M for mass over T squared. So then if we put that back into our pressure equation above, we get force, which is going to be LM over T squared multiplied by one over L squared. So these Ls cancel out and you end up with mass over T squared L squared or for pressure then you get um, T to the minus 2 L to the minus 2. So that's what pressure is and that's um, 
what a over v squared could be defined as in terms of dimensions. But of course, um, we're dividing a by v squared. So we know that a divided by v squared could be defined by the units mass times the minus two length to the minus two. But v in itself, as we said, is a volume and could be defined as L cubed. So v squared is going to be L to the six. So a over L to the six is going to be m t minus two L minus two. So if we bring the L to the power of six over, um, we get, if we multiply both sides by L to the six, I should say, we get L to the five t to the minus two. And that gives us uh, an answer of B for this question. I think this is pretty tough, but once you get the logic of it and you understand sort of where the direction of the question's headed, uh, especially when you're at sort of this stage here, um, it, it's not too bad. So the answer for this one is going to be B. Okay, question 101. The value of the constant Z could be expressed in terms of which unit? Okay, so let's draw out the equation again. We've got P plus a over v squared multiplied by v minus b and that equals z t and this is t for temperature not time um, okay so the units have to be the same on both sides i think that's the first thing we should say the units have to be the same on both sides and so really we've got pressure here multiplied by volume and that's going to be multiplied by z and then something in temperature would be kelvin right um, so we've already worked out what our pressure units would be, um, but let's remember that it's just going to be a force over an area, and we're multiplying that by a volume, and that's going to be equal to z, and we'll just keep that as k, we'll keep that side of the equation the same for now. Now, if we change area to being L squared, because remember, area is really just defined by two lengths, and volume is going to be L cubed, because then if we made this a, a cube, we would need a third length to define this. Um, and we can set this equal to ZK and move on. So then we end up with force times length equal ZK. Um, so force times length, if something's moving along a length, it's moving a distance. And if you, force times distance is called work. So force times distance equals work, which is probably something you've seen before. Um, distance, of course, is measured in L, like this here. Okay, so then work is measured in joules, so we can replace the left-hand side of this equation with joules equals Z Kelvin. And if we take the Kelvin across the other side, we get joules per Kelvin is the unit for Z. And that then gives us an answer of D for question 101. So I understand these questions are really tough, but hopefully now that if you've seen it, you'd be able to get it if a question like this, God forbid, came up in the exam. Um, 